Welcome to Focused on Forward. The purpose of this podcast is to focus on recovery from life situations, be it a disease, chronic or acute, perhaps the loss of someone so dear to you in death, or a change of life patterns that has affected you so profoundly that you have no choice but to find your new normal and become focused on moving forward. Each episode is designed to show the positivity that people bring to each and every one of their stories, the successes they've had, ways that they have become so definitively focused on moving forward. We look forward to sharing their stories, and we hope that they inspire you just as much as they have inspired us. Thanks for listening, and enjoy the show. Hello, and welcome to Focused on Forward. Today, I am very excited and, and, and pleased to bring to you, uh, if you're familiar with TikTok, this, this man, his, his username there is Man From Somewhere, and uh, his name is Johan Van Buren, and Johan is one of the people on TikTok that I find to be extremely captivating. He has a lot of positive content. He focuses on moving forward on things, and so his message of positivity and, and focusing on how to move forward seem to be a perfect fit for our little podcast here, Focused on Forward. So I was extremely thrilled when he said that he would be a guest on the show and that he was looking forward to talking with us. So Johan, thank you for being a guest today. We're excited to have you. Oh, I'm excited to be with you. Yeah, excellent. So um, one of the things that I, I noticed about your TikToks and, and things, other than the fact that, that they were uh, so positive and you're always being encouraging and upbuilding and, and all those things, is you talk about being on a path to self-healing yeah so uh, many times in life there's things and obstacles in our in our way that we have to work ourselves around and and overcome so if you don't mind could you tell us what led you to a path of self-healing can you take us through that story yeah i mean my um my whole background is i was born in south africa um and south africa is a very harsh country you know i uh i grew up in the apartheid era uh, although I was a, a young boy myself during that time, um, it, it was very harsh um, to sort of see us as a young boy growing up. And also um, the the way South Africans were back in the day, you know, they were very conservative people where men used to just sort of go to work and provide. Um, and there was no real interaction, no really sharing of feelings, you know, emotions were suppressed um, and you just had to get on with it. And um, so I, I actually moved over to the UK when I was about 23. And um, on, a, on, a, on a rugby basis, I wanted to come play professional rugby over in the UK. And that's why I initially came over, you know. And um, as I, when I came over, I was very um, self-destructive as to say, you know, I would... Uh, I would get into a relationship and it would go very well, but very soon I would um, self-destruct. You know, I, I, I sort of believed, my belief system was that I didn't deserve happiness, you know, um, and I didn't deserve any, any good coming my way. Um, and that goes back also to my childhood where, um, long story short, my biological father I didn't really found out about that until a later stage in my life which um, was quite traumatic for me because my dad that brought me up literally brought me up since I was a baby and um, my grandmother told me the story that my dad wasn't my dad when I was probably I think about 11 12 years old um, she took it off her own back to tell me without my parents consent um, because going back to those sort of era as well, the, the older generation, very, very conservative. She thought that they, my parents were never going to share it with me. Um, and in their, their side, they were just waiting for me to be a little bit older to understand it basically a bit more. Um, so, and my mum even said to me, you know, when that episode happened, my whole demeanor changed. You know, I went from a, being a really open child to someone that completely shut off. So um, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty big shift in your world there. Yeah, it was, you know, and it's, it's a, it's a really funny story how I actually discovered my, um, my biological father. 
because I uh, and and a lot of people when I tell them the story they go oh my god are you serious because <laughs> how it leads up to it was basically I was seeing this girl uh, I was 17 she was a year older than me and uh, we started dating and I've always been very open about the fact that um, my dad's not my biological father but is my dad that brought me up if it would come up in a conversation you know I wouldn't go and blurt it out to the world but I've always been quite open about everything about my life so um this girl uh, we we were dating for quite a while and I basically told her the story at some point and she that evening told her mum and uh, I told her my biological father's name and uh, when she told her mum her mum literally almost fell on her back and it turned out that her mum and my biological father's sister were best friends. Oh, my. School. Okay. And uh, that's literally how I got in touch with him was, was through her. And a lot, of, a lot of people, when I tell them the story, they go, oh, please don't tell me she was your sister. <laughs> I'll be honest. That's exactly where I thought you were going. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, but anyway, so that that was uh, that was a big thing in my life that um, was the trauma, basically, you know. Um, and if you don't heal traumas, you uh, you will carry on with those traumas through throughout your life. You know, you have to go and heal them, agreed, and and and, and, and overcome them, basically. And that's a big thing in a, in a child's life as well. The first six years, and this is what I've learned through therapy and stuff. Is the first six years is when any child's belief system basically gets formed, um, and it can be any sort of trauma. That's why they could, for instance, bite their nails or um, react to certain things, etc. But anyway, yeah, that, that was a big thing for me. So when I came over to the UK, you know, I like I said earlier, as I came to play rugby in the UK, and uh, I was in the country about four or five months when uh, I met my first wife. And um, we, uh, we got married, and um, we had two beautiful sons. Um, but unfortunately, the, the, uh, the marriage didn't last, you know, it did break down in the end. And... Um, a lot of that was to do with me self-destructing, you know, I, I literally just didn't open up, you know, I, I was very closed off. As soon as things started going well, I, I start closing off and I, I just go completely within myself. So once we broke up, you know, um, I started looking into ways of overcoming fears and overcoming emotional uh, um breakdowns that that restricted me in 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 growing you know um because as you get older in life as well you start seeing things and that's a big thing that i i learned myself is when i came over to the uk um is to accept different cultures because in south africa we are a very religious country you know christianity is huge in south africa so anything outside the norm of Christianity is a big, 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 big no-no, you know, you, um, it's just not really accepted in a, in a way, if you know what I mean, or back in the day when I grew up. So when I came to the UK, that was a, a big eye-opener for me to interact with different cultures, different backgrounds, different ethnicities, you know, um, so I was very curious to understand what their point of view was, what their beliefs was, you know, um, so I started making a lot of friends from different backgrounds, uh, different religions, different different ethnicities, um, different cultures, just to sort of learn. And um, like I say, so that unfortunately my first my first marriage didn't didn't work out. That broke up. And then um, when I met my second wife, uh, we we were kind of on the way um, of healing ourselves as well as a couple, you know. Um, because again, the same sort of problem started happening in, in that marriage as well, where things just wasn't going as smooth as it did in the first two years, for instance, you know, it started progressively breaking down. And that's when I started discovering um, meditation. I, uh, I did a lot of therapy as well, which is uh, emotional freedom technique, EFT, which is the yep. tapping technique. So I, I, I went to see a therapist uh, who helped me in, in that with respect. And the wonderful thing about EFT is it basically takes you back to that childhood trauma 
um, and it works a lot on episodes that has caused you to to form those beliefs and what you can do is during that EFT therapy is you go back into that scenario and you completely change the picture so you 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 just heal that trauma basically and you come out the other side um, how you want to to go forward basically so that helped a lot for me um, and during that time as well the therapist I was seeing introduced me to a a wonderful uh, mentor called um, Dr. Joe Dispenza, uh, who's, uh, who's um, he does his own meditations. He uh, does a lot of quantum physics. He's a chiropractor by, um, that, that, that's what he used to do. He used to be a chiropractor. He's still doing that, but he still he had a huge practice. And his background story was he got run over during a triathlon. And, um, he broke his back and he had to get Harrington rods basically put in and oh he was going to be in, in constant pain for the yeah. rest of his life. Um, so I don't know if you know the story about Dr. Joe Dispenza, but he basically healed himself in 12 weeks through meditation. Wow. Um, which is, yeah. And uh, <laughs> I was like, when I read that, I was just like, Oh my God, you know? And, um, so I started, I got his books um, and I started reading the books and I started getting the meditations. And then I went on to a, a three day retreat in Edinburgh, which is like an introduction uh, into his work. And the wonderful thing about him is, is um, he explains to you what meditation is all about, you know, because as men, we are very analytical and we want to understand why we do things we don't just want to do stuff we want to understand why we do these things you right know? not emotional i lies it's a uh, it's a very analytical process for most men yes. exactly exactly and this is what what what's so brilliant about him is he explains to you exactly the quantum physics behind it as well he um he goes into depth about that um and for me when i when i started doing his work what one of the things he says is he tells you what to do and why you do it. And then the how becomes easier, you know? Um, and uh, so I started doing his work and then I went on to a, a seven day retreat as well um, in Cancun, which was um, a complete eye opener and a life changing experience for me. Because uh, we don't just do, do we do sort of four or five different meditations. You even do like a walking meditation where you meditate with your eyes open. You know, you get yourself into that state where you, you don't focus on one thing. You just open your vision and you literally don't see anything. You just see the openness in front of you while you do the walking meditation. Um, and then obviously we do a, a seated medita meditation. You do a lying down meditation and a standing meditation as well. Um, and uh, I can honestly say, hand on heart, he's, he is probably one of the, the biggest influences in my life that uh, completely changed things around for me uh, in, 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 the, in the, the part of healing. Okay. Which, um, really sort of grounded me in, in a way, you know, and also because I used to have a lot of anger, you know, I... Um, a oh, huge huge anger you know i would uh, literally at the click of a button i could i i used to flip around and 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 be very aggressive not physically but verbally verbally um, emotionally yeah oh absolutely you know and and uh, um it and and that's how i self-destructed you know i would i would just literally explode so um that for me was 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 a massive massive a part of my healing and i still do the meditations now you know i've it's been over a, it's about two years now that i've been on the the okay. retreat in cancun um obviously last year uh, or this 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 past year all of those uh he does once one a month more or less all over the world um and there's about a thousand to two thousand people that goes to his retreats um and I was going to do more, but obviously with what's happened, um, it's, yeah, it's thank you. 2020. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> complete disaster. Yeah. But, um, yeah, 2020 you know, you, pretty much shut all that down. So exactly, exactly. The wonderful thing is about Dr. Joe, what he's, what he's done is once you come out of the retreats, he's got a, a face group, Facebook group for, um, his attendees that's done the seven day 
retreat where he comes in once a month um, and uh, he, he talks to you and he goes through things with you, you know, um, as a group. Um, and what he did as well is during this uh, isolation period and the lockdown period, he actually did a retreat online uh, for free for, for all the attendees that has done a seven nice. day retreat as well, nice. which was right in the beginning of lockdown, you know? Um, yeah. So, yeah. So it's just been, for me, that side of things has been, that's, that's where I've done a lot of work, you know, and I, I meditate still daily. I, I get up quite early in the morning. Um, I normally meditate any time between sort of four, half past four, five. That's the sort of time I get up to do my meditation because what, tend to happen is the melatonin levels in your brain is still very active so it's very easy for you to slip into that he calls it the eye of the needle where the body's asleep but the mind's awake you know so um, and that's where you want to be and once you're in that in that zone there you can then connect to the unified field as he says which all of us got is basically the aura that that every person has got around you and that's where you draw your energy from um, and instead of, and, and this is another thing I've learned from him as well, is if you, for instance, um, sit and ponder and you've got issues and things in your life and someone is, for instance, say someone's pissed you off in, in traffic um, and you, uh, you're driving to work and that guy's cut you off, you can sit about that lingering for hours and it can be at the bottom of your stomach and really just grind away on you. And what you're actually doing is by thinking about that all the time, you are putting all of your energy into that problem. So instead of doing that, what we do is we, we try and bring that energy back into yourself. And when you do that, instead of focusing on that, you focus that energy back on yourself. And that is now creative energy, you know, and that's how you can now become a better person. You can start creating your future. You know, it's, uh, it's very in-depth. I'm just sort of skimming on, on the stuff that he does and what he's taught me. Um, but yeah, for me, that that's been a major, major part. Okay. So how I got into the TikTok side of things is in the beginning of the year, you know, it was just um, my my second marriage broke down the beginning of the year. Um, basically, I and also what I did back in of last year is I actually went on to a few different retreats. I went to Peru um, on an ayahuasca retreat, which was pff, mind-blowing you know for me that was also um an eye-opener um different culture um met we were there was about eight nine of us on the retreat um we were there for 10 days um in the middle of the rainforest there was absolutely no contact with the outside world there was no wi-fi there was literally an hour's electricity uh during night time when they would start a generator there was no hot water. Um, they used to bring the water from the from the Amazon up, the, the guys who worked there, and then they would um, come and fill your tank in your little shack that you lived in. And you also, the shacks that we sort of stayed in or the little lodges we had was quite far apart. So the only times we really interacted with each other was during breakfast, lunch, or dinner time. And during the days we had ceremonies in the evening, there would be no dinner you would only literally see the people in the morning when you had breakfast and then lunch and then once that's finished that hour that you spend together people would go and do their own thing you know you go back to your your place where you stayed or you can go for a walk in the forest um you know but you are very on your own there uh, and that's part of the the healing because okay. when you are with your own thoughts you know that's that's when you start going right what what's coming up what is that trying to teach me what is that feeling where does that feeling resonate from you know um and then obviously sure. with the ceremonies that we did um i don't know if you've done the ayahuasca before but the ayahuasca is, uh, is which is a, basically a plant medicine um uh which is the dmt side of is it dmt i think it is yeah DMT, i'm not sure yeah um and that's um it is a, a some people say it's a, a hallucination drug um but you know it just for me the experience that i had is when you do the ayahuasca is you are completely 100 percent with it like me and you now talking you know this you don't feel that you're under any influence of any any drugs or anything like that but when you stand up you are very disorientated you know 
Um, and also the, the very humbling side of the retreat I had there was the Peruvian people who worked on the retreat. You know, they were very, very poor. However, they absolutely went out of their way to make sure that you as an individual, your needs were met, you were looked after, you were cared for. You know, um, it's a very humbling experience because it's, it's very similar. The, the thing I can, not similar, the thing that I can relate to is when my um, first wife gave birth to our sons, uh, the doctor said to her, when she walked into the, uh, the delivery room that leave your dignity at the front door and you can pick it back up when you go out um, because, you know, there's just no control. And it's exactly the same with the ayahuasca. You know, it's, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a messy process. Uh, it's a lot of purging. Um, and, uh, but, you know, they, they look after you and um, the, the two shamans that, that were there, you know, they were just absolutely wonderful. Um, we had meetings in the mornings after the, the retreat in the evening and he would go through everything with us, what we experienced, you know, we would share. So for me, that was, that was also a very humbling experience. So when I came back of that, I then went to uh, Glastonbury in the beginning of January and I went on a breathwork course um i did transformational breath because all of these things what i found through time and investigating different cultures it's all connected it's all the same thing you know there's a few things yes christianity might believe this and buddhism might believe that but for me in general what i found it's very very similar you know it's it's mm -hmm. all connected it's all interlinked um but like i said there is a lot of things that is different but there's so many things that is very much the same so and that's that's what i found so um then i went on to the breathwork course and that week i did the breathwork as well was also a very um similar but very different experience as well where you use your breath to basically get you into that almost like an hypnotic state uh where you disconnect from the third dimension and you connect to the fifth dimension if you, if, if that makes sense you know um, and you, you literally go into into the unified field where everything is possible you know um there's no time you know uh, if you want something now it's there you know it's 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 that concept so um i did a lot of healing during that as well and then uh, like i said it's the beginning of after that my my second marriage broke down um, and that's in that period, I was very isolated. Uh, I lost my home. I lost my family, you know, um, and I was very, very on my own. I only had my, my young daughter with me, um, who um, who's with me more or less 50 percent of the time now still. Um, and uh, the times I didn't have her, I felt so disconnected, although I did a lot of the healing there was a lot of these fears that started coming back. And the way I felt is the only way that I can progress is by putting out what I've learned, you know, and, and by giving back. And so when I started TikTok, first of all, the first things I did was, as they say on TikTok, was thirst trapping, you know. Um, so I was a bit of a thirst trap, I, I guess, <laughs> which was which was quite fun. Um, but I still did a lot of motivational quotes. There's a guy called Creating Wonders, um, which uh, I did a lot of his uh, voiceover stuff, basically just lip syncing his his quotes. Um, and I had a lot of feedback where people were saying you you should use your own voice, you know. Um, and that's when I went into that, which was, I would say, probably I've been TikToking since maybe January, March, April. I think it was the middle of April when I really started, beginning of May, maybe. Um, so it was maybe June, July when I started really flipping to started doing more of my own voice. And that's when it started growing. And I started giving back a, a lot more to the community and to the world really out there. Um, and it's been a very humbling experience as well for myself. You know, I've had untold messages uh, of people coming back to me, uh, just thanking me, you know. Um, yeah, so it's been, yeah, it's been an eye opener. If you, yeah, you know what I'm I've, I've, I've read, well, I don't see your private messages, but I've seen a lot of the comments that people have left on your post 
Um, I think I'm pretty sure I've left a couple of them. Uh, just thanking you for the positivity of the, some of the things that you've done. Because uh, I think I started following you, I want to say it was in August. Because I was, I'm, you know, I think I started, I think I started on TikTok in July. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I was kind of late to the TikTok party, but, you know. Um, so let me ask you a couple questions uh, yeah. based on on your experiences. Um you know, how you, how you have decided to become focused on forward, you're, you're, you've moved yourself onto this path to self-healing, this path of positivity. So how do you now deal with failure? Because that's something we all have to deal with. It's all something we all have to work through. And especially for somebody who's working on healing, there's always going to be a fear of failure. So how do yeah, you deal with that on a day-to-day? Yeah. So for me, you know, it's, I, I, I mean, like everyone, we're only human, you know, and we will stumble at times. Um, what, what I try and focus on is if something does come up, uh, I try and always flip it around and say, right, what is that trying to teach me? Where, if, if that anger comes up or that emotion comes up of resentment or, um, a lot of the times it's probably in my situation will be anger, you know, um, or frustration. And I would then go into that emotion and that feeling and really delve into that and sit in myself maybe for five minutes, sometimes half an hour and just close my eyes. And I focus on that emotion to say, right, where, where do I feel that in my body? Where, where is that resonating from, you know? And, and if you go into yourself, what I feel for my, for myself personally, when I do that, where, and that comes down to the therapy as well that I've done is I can start feeling how old is that? I ask myself, how old is that feeling? You know, is it, is it a feeling that comes up when I was, 13 when I was bullied in the swimming pool for instance where my my mates didn't want to the, the older boys I was playing with at the time didn't want to let me out of the pool and, and I had the fear of drowning you know is it that sort of frustration or is it a frustration of um not getting into the first rugby team for instance you know um that's the sort of things that I I focus on I go literally go into that emotion and I'm asking myself the question where does that resonate where does that come from and what is that trying to teach me um, and that that is the thing that I focus on. And, and I would say nine times out of 10, it works for, for myself. And I, I can relate to that. And I can go back into that uh, specific event and heal that memory. As, okay. If you know what I mean. Well, that's good. Okay. So I've also found that for people to be able to maintain a, a path of positivity uh, moving forward, uh, we have to learn acceptance and gratitude. Yes. So how do you, how does Johan express gratitude for good things or good people? Oh, how do I express gratitude? <laughs> do you know, it's, um, it's a funny one because I, I, my whole outlook is I'm, I'm, I, I look at what I've got. I actually did a quote this morning um which i've not posted yet or i might be posting that tonight or um when i've got my daughter because I, I do a lot of stuff now where I, I i back it up and then when i've not got my when i've got my daughter um i try and stay off but i've still got the the the, the sort of drafts there that i can then still post and still being active on, on online basically so um the one that i uh, did this morning was basically about being grateful for what i've got now and not um be ungrateful or or not be ungrateful or um try and get more or what i've not got and have the resentment because i've not got that other stuff yet so if i just focus on what i've got now right that gratitude and if you if you've got gratitude in your heart right because that's where love comes from is 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 the center point it's in your heart yeah and if you've got that gratitude in there they, they can't be no lack and they can't be no separation because if you if you feel that love you, it's impossible to feel any disconnection to 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 whatever you've not got because through this meditation of dr joe as well is if you if you want something and you meditate on it and you can basically create your own future you can you can create whatever you want so what we've learned is is instead of cause and effect we do we we turn it around 
So you feel first, if you, so, so let me put it to you this way. If I give you a million pounds, you're going to be pretty happy, right? Oh yeah, okay. sure. Now, how, how's that, that feeling that you're going to have, if you can imagine yourself, there's a million pound right there now on top of your table, that's yours. You are going to be, oh my God, that feeling of joy, of excitement, of possibilities is just going to overflow. Oh yeah, absolutely. But what if you can feel that before the actual event? So that's what we do. So if you can feel that emotion, you will actually draw that event to you. Okay. Right. So, and this is what I do as well is with everything now is my gratitude. I, I've taught myself through Dr. Joe's work um, to start feeling gratitude before anything else. I'm, I'm always grateful for everything I've got now and whatever I'm still going to get in the future. I'm already grateful for that. And when you've got that gratitude in your heart, you've got that love in your heart, you can't feel lack, you can't feel separation because you're overflowing. You know, it's like, it's like almost like if you're in love and that first sort of month that you are literally overflowing with, you want to just buy a chocolate and flowers and you want to kiss and you want to cuddle, you know, that, that feeling, yes. there's nothing better than that. <laughs> you know, if you can teach no, yourself true. to just feel like that constantly, they, nothing can beat that, can it? So no, that's, no, no, that's no, how no. I sort of express my, my life now, you know, as I'm, I'm like I, I drove back from Glasgow this morning. Um, I, I was down there with some friends, and and uh, we we did a, a lot of stuff over the weekend, um, which I posted on TikTok as well, where we did a, a ropes course and we went hiking. Uh, I went into the the waterfalls um, on the Great Mare's Tail, and we did some uh, wild swimming, you know, in, in in some of the gorges there, which was fantastic. And uh, driving back, you know, it was. Uh, Every time I drive this road back in through the highlands, you know, it's it's the same road, but I see different things all the time. You know, I'm always on the lookout of the beauty in in in, in everywhere. And I know specific places what's going to come up, but I still look forward to that because I know if it's rained a bit more, the water that's going to come down that mountain is going to be a bit stronger. And, and for me, when I see waterfalls and things like that, oh, my God, I'm like a child. I just want to go in it, you know. So oh, they're amazing. I, I always try and just remember those feelings. And that's what I focus on. All right. Excellent. So, OK. So, uh, yeah, developing a feeling of contentment, we could say, uh, being happy with what we have, looking forward to the other good things are coming. I like that. That's very good. All right. So another thing I, that I find with people who are are positive and, and focused on forward is that it comes for a lot of things. It's, it's about perspective. Uh -huh. And what your answer just now is a little bit about our perspective on things, about being happy in things. But how do you keep that sense of perspective when things are tough? When life when 2020 happens and life gets tough for everybody, because this has been a common thread with a lot of people I've interviewed this year, is that there's been a difficulty in keeping perspective. So how do you fight, fight to keep perspective on a day-to-day -day basis to, be, to allow you to continue to move forward? Well, I, for me, that's when I turn to TikTok, you know, and I, I, I look at TikTok basically um since i started doing it as everyone is in the same scenario and what a lot of people have i would probably say 95 percent of the people of our generation of say the 25 30 30 plus um we've made fun of a difficult situation we've literally laughed about um things that's that's been out of our control you know things that's been disastrous you know um and and so whenever i feel that that side of things does creep in i go onto tiktok and i start laughing about and i, and I just scroll you know I, I don't focus on on what 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 i've put out i go onto the the for you page um, yeah. and my following page and I just flick through there's some people I do know that that will always cheer me up and I would go to their page specifically to go and have a look at them um, and sometimes I would just go and I would uh, I've got a, a another phone that, I, I, that I've connected but I don't um, you I've not got an account on there but I can still scroll so because the algorithm knows what I'm looking for it doesn't always bring the funny stuff up for me 
So I use the other phone to just go and scroll. And then you get so much different content that comes up yeah. um, and funny stuff, you know, and that's, that's what I turn to if things are really tough and, 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 and pressing, you know, and, and I can tell you what, within literally five, 10 minutes, um, I would have found three or four TikToks in there. That's literally made me barely laugh. And, and that sort <laughs> of, that depression is, is or the, 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 the darkness is, is completely lifted. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I I, uh, I have to be honest. I do pretty much the same thing. Um, <laughs> I have found that, you know, um, yeah, there's a negative side to everything out there. But if you, you know, there's so much positivity that I found on that app. I think it's, I think it's crazy. Uh, not only that, but there's people who are out there. Um, there's people who push positivity, and I and I like following them. But there are also people who have got just some straight up humor pages that are just great. Or yeah. uh, um, I'm a big animal lover. And yeah, so yeah, yeah. they're brilliant animals, aren't they? Yeah. And so all these puppy posts and dog silly animal posts and, yeah, yeah. and things along those lines. It's kind of hard not to get a smile after about oh you know, my two, I watched one the other night. In, you see the you dog know? that literally um uh he got every time he gets excited, he, he passes out. Have you seen that one? <laughs> no, I have not, but I'm oh afraid. my god, I'll send it to you. I'll send it right. to you when yeah. we finish. I'll send it to you on TikTok, mate. It's the funniest thing. I literally, I mean, it's <laughs> He, he literally gets so excited, he faints. It's it's the funniest thing you'll see in your life. Oh my! That's honestly, hysterical. I love it. That's so funny. So yeah, so <laughs> that that sort of stuff I can relate. It's very funny. <laughs> yeah, nice. Okay, so I also think that you know you you talk about your own self healing as a path, and that you're growing towards a path of self healing. So I look at my own life. Uh, at 17, I wasn't the same person I was at 14 at 20. I wasn't the same person I was at 17, you yeah. know, and, and so forth and so on. We're always evolving and changing and becoming something different due to our circumstances. Absolutely. So that leads me to ask you, yeah, who are you becoming? Do you know, um, I'm, I, I did a, I did a, a, a lip sync of um, the speech that Matthew McConaughey did um, in the Oscars of My Hero. Yeah, that's and, brilliant. Yes, and I, I see myself like that. You know, I, um, I look up to him a lot. I, I think he's, uh, he's a fantastic role model. You know, he's very humbling, um, and uh, he's. Um, he's always got so much positivity himself. You know, and and specifically that speech. You know, he like he says in that he's he was asked to to name his hero and then he came back and he said well it's me in 10 years time and then he came back again after 10 years and he asked him the same question he says oh no 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 i'm not even close my hero is 10 years from now and that's how i look at myself as well you know i'm always going to be developing and i'm always going to be evolving um into which eventually will be the end goal but I doubt it if we'll ever get there, you know. So you're always going to have to try to be, become better, and 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 just strive to um, to be better. So for me, as well as what I look at is, I just want to be a good dad, you know, to my children. Um, I want them to look back one day and go, you know what, he he's he's done the best that he could. Um, he's provided. He's he's gone out of his way to do things for us, you know, um, and not just for us, you know everyone else that they will talk to would prop i would like them to say yes you know we can uh, almost say that he's got a legacy if you know what i mean um which is tough you know because um we're only human and, and we will make mistakes but that's how we learn you know you, you you have to make mistakes to evolve um and to better yourself you know and and, and that's what i do um and focus on and I, I always just strive to to make yesterday better than it was oh, t tomorrow better than it was yesterday no, I think that's good. I think that's a very good outlook on it. Um, I saw that McConaughey speech and I, I think I watched it about three times in succession Yeah. because each time I picked up a new note out of it that I didn't catch the first time. And I just thought it was such a brilliant way of looking at it Yeah, yeah because, yeah, yeah. because I, you know, I don't want to be the same person in 10 years. No. I, I want to be somebody different. I want to be somebody better uh, than I am now. Uh, and so I'm hoping that the people who knew me when I was 20, look at me now in my, my early forties and go, yeah, he's a completely different man. You know, oh, he's, yeah. you know, he's a, he's a better man than he was back then. 
Um, so true, yeah. so true. You know, I um I spend a, a weekend with some of my friends, um, which is probably about over a month, two months ago now. You know, and um, we had a few drinks the night, and and things came up of uh, how we were same sort of thing 10 years ago you know and uh we've all evolved and i mean we even there's a picture of the three of us that that we took literally over 10 years ago we, we compared the two you know and uh although we can still see it's us we we have evolved so much and and it's the same in um how we were back in those days as well you know we were completely different people um in different scenarios you know um uh in all walks of life, you know, uh, with no children, now we've got children, uh, how we behaved as, as sort of single guys then to, to how we are behaving now, you know, um, how, yeah, just the, 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 the whole, the whole thing is, is completely different. So yes, I relate to that a hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. So here's a question I like to ask as we near the end of this, I, there's a question I like to ask every guest. And that question is, looking back over the entirety of your life, the entirety of Johan's experience on this blue sphere we call Earth, not to minimize your life experiences down to one sentence or one piece of advice, but what's one thing that's your, if you're to look back, what's the one shining star of information that you would love to make sure that everybody else knows what, or that you would want to share? Just to believe in yourself. Believe in yourself because you can achieve and do anything and everything that you want 100 percent. all right excellent so uh johan um where are it, can people find the best information or best ways to follow you see your message see the things that you've been sharing uh where where can people look for you so basically, I've, my, my two major platforms I use now is, is TikTok, which is um, a man from somewhere, um, as well as uh, I've started being much more, much more active on, uh, on Instagram as well now. Uh, my username is V Johan V, um, uh, also man from somewhere on there. So they're both linked. But if you go into my TikTok, there is uh, in the bio, there is a link there that um, will take you to my Instagram. Um, and what I'm also going to be starting to do now is um, I am going to create a YouTube channel uh, very soon. It's in the process of being done um, where, because I do a lot of adventures, you know. Uh, oh, excellent. Okay. 80% of my, my TikToks is um, out, out in, in the mountains or uh, exploring. So I am going to start doing a sort of like an exploring blog sort of uh, vlog, uh, which is going to be uh, on the YouTube channel. So people can see from start to finish where I would trek into the mountains, what I go through, uh, the whole setup, how it's getting done. Um, that's I want to create that. Um, with fortunate, what I also do with uh, in, in work wise is I, I do um, modeling and, and, uh, and I'm an actor as well. Um, I do low, mostly um, commercial acting and commercial modeling. Um, I've got a big contract with uh, the Czech Republic. Uh, I'm basically the face of the lottery. Um, nice. So I, yeah, so we've done, I've done, I've done that for the last five years. This is going on six years now. Um, uh, so all the commercials, all the online stuff, um, they've got a whole Facebook page. They've got a whole Instagram page, basically just about me and everything I do. So when I do go on these commercial shoots it won't just be for the lottery but for other stuff as well um obviously this year has been a bit or has been very restricted um when i go on those sort of things that's going to go onto the youtube channel as well and that's what i want to create is that side of thing because i've on my last shoot i did with the euro jackpot i met a um the photographer from from czech who was there um he's got his own youtube channel where he does similar sort of things he's not he doesn't do it vocally he's just um he just takes photographs and he does um videos he, he does mountain biking and stuff like that as well um and i got the idea of him so um and he's going to help me a little bit excellent okay so, yeah so that's that's going to come in but all of that will be linked on the uh on the on the tiktok page which is a man from somewhere okay yeah guys definitely check it out uh johan has some some uh really interesting content some really inspiring things and as he's talking about uh the scenery the backdrop in many of his videos is breathtaking um the waterfalls and the mountains the uh, i watched your tiktok about the rope climbs the other day uh you know and just yeah 
some of this stuff just wow um yeah. <laughs> i it's, do have fun <laughs> yeah it's it's some of those are, are places i very much hope to visit uh someday in my life so um but yeah so very good johan thank you so much for being a guest on focused on forward today this has been a, a delightful conversation and uh really genuinely appreciate your positivity sir thank you Mate, thank you so much for having me on i really appreciate it all right guys that's going to conclude us for focused on forward well, that concludes another episode of Focused on Forward. To be a guest of Focused on Forward, you can reach us through Twitter at podcastfof, through our Facebook page named Focused on Forward, or through email focusedonforward at gmail.com. We look forward to hearing each and every one of your stories that has yet to be told. So until then, be safe, be kind, and be loving to one another as you stay focused on forward.